Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be looking at another creative tool and this time at the matte effect. Now we are once again in Luminar Neo, in editing module and at the creative tools and we are talking about the matte photography. This effect has taken the editing industry by storm over the last decade and the reason being is that it actually mimics the real film in a way that it's unlikely any other technique. There are so many other trends that we have seen come and go, but matte photography is a little bit different as it creates a timeless effect that remains beautiful throughout the years and the popularity hasn't really gone. So if you want to create this effect in Luminar Neo, we have the specific tool here and this is what we're going to be looking at. Now the matte tool can give your photos an H look with the flat colors and high contrast. It works well for both landscape and portrait to change the emotion of your image. Now I will also show you that it works great on food photography and some other styles but first of all as always we're gonna go through each one of the sliders in this tool. Starting right here looking at the amount this slider adjusts the overall strength of the matte effect. You already guessed that so when we push that it start to apply the matte effect to the image. Now the next slider we have is called Fade. This slider controls the loss of detail that happens in the darker areas of an image. This is why I choose this picture because I think it's going to be great to show you of what I'm talking about. So let's focus on this darker area and I will push the fade. And as you can see, we're starting to lose the details in these areas all the way until they almost disappear. Now, as always, two things I wanted to remind you. Number one, when we're trying these sliders, make sure you push them all the way so you can see what they do to your image and you can use them easier in the future. Number two, to reset the sliders, all you need to do is to double click on their name and they reset either to the zero or to the default value. So we are somewhere around here and we're moving to contrast slider. Now this slider adjusts the relationship between the brighter and darker area of the image. Let's have a look. The default is 20 and when we shift it toward right, you can see that we're getting more contrast and the darker areas are becoming more defined. And when we shift it the other way around, everything is kind of melting together. It's becoming very flat and it's something that can be used very creatively, maybe sometimes as a part of local adjustment. And it's important that you know what this slider does. I think around 20 is good to start with. So let's leave it there. Then we move to Vividness. Vividness is a new slider in Luminar Neo. We haven't had that in Luminar AI. And this uh, slider actually controls the overall saturation of the image and the matte effect once applied. So uh, let me show you if I'll shift it all the way down, it become black and white. And when I shift it the other way around, it can become really, really strong and saturated look. So again, by resetting, it's on minus 20. And it's really cool that it's here because we don't have to go back to the color tool or the develop tool to do some other adjustments there. And we can just stick with this tool right here. And now it's time to move our attention towards the color toning area. Now, if you don't see it, you can click on this little arrow here and it will just open it. And we have a three sliders here. First one is called wrench. This slider affects the portion of an image in which the color is shifted. So let's push it all the way. And as you can see on this image right here and specifically in the darker areas, we are changing the color there. Now that will be affected by the hue slider and this slider select the color that the image takes on. So in this case, we are on red. However, as we 
push it alongside the little slider, the colors change. So you can get blue, green, uh, orange, purple, and back to red, whatever you prefer. And finally, we have the saturation slider, and this slider can be used to affect the saturation of the matte effect. So at, by default, it's on 50, we can bring it all the way down, which in some way actually completely cancels the color toning, or we can push it the other way, and we really push the color all the way through. So that's the sliders. Now I think we should jump into some examples and see how we can use the matte effect. Now, as you can see, we have three more images here. And if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description, follow the link there, and it will bring you to our Dropbox account and you just download your pictures and you can use them and do the editing alongside me. So the next image we're going to be looking at is the landscape photo. And for that, we need to jump back into the edit module. Let's start by the amount slider and let's push it all the way to somewhere around 60 or 70 so we can see the effect on the image. Then we're going to use the fade, but we definitely don't want to overdo it because the picture is already beautiful. We just want to add a little bit of extra touch to it. So I think somewhere around maybe 20 will work very well here. Now for this type of image, the contrast is really important. At the moment it's looking good, but I would probably push it even further to really bring and punch in the colors and the contrast and the light. Now if we would push it the other way around, it would look uh, not as good. So let's push it up and get somewhere around 30. Now with the vividness, we can bring the vividness down, but I think we're taking away some of the colors from the original image and pushing it up, it would make it a little bit unnatural. So we just leave it the way it was. Now I think specifically for this kind of landscape photo, I would leave the color toning alone because it's already beautiful and we're just adding a little bit of extra touch to make it a little bit more special. Now let's see before the effect and after, and I think it's quite nice. It's more kind of editorial Instagram edit. However, it still look really cool. And this is a way how you would use this tool for your landscape photos. But now let me show you how we would use this tool for food photography. Now we are on example number three. We have this lovely food photo right here. So we're going to edit module and we again focusing on our matte tool. So with this food photo, it's already very nice, but for me, it's a little bit too sharp and a little bit too vibrant and it's missing a contrast altogether. So let's see what we can do to it. Let's push the amount. And again, we're going quite high. You can always adjust it after, but you really want to see what you're doing and then you can push it back if you think the edit is a bit too strong. Then we can push the fade. And in this case, I would go quite high. I would go somewhere around 30. Then with the contrast, let's see. If we push it one way, I think it looks really cool. The other way, we are really starting to use lots of sharpness. So let's rather stay somewhere around 40. With the colors, I think we can push them just a little bit. And then in a color toning, I think for this picture, we can use this. We can actually bring the wrench up just so we see which areas we're editing and what color we're adding. And I'm looking for something like um, no blue, no green, something between the, uh, the kind of tail effect. So something like this, maybe even like this. And now by using the saturation slider, I can just tune it down and get it only to the degree I like. Now well, let's see before and after. Now you can do that by using this little eye on the bottom of your screen or anytime you start to edit with your tool, it gets uh, three new icons. And the first one is the before and after specifically for this tool. The second one is to add mask if you want to mask the tool around your image. And the final one really just reset the tool. So you can see before and after here too. Now I really like what we've done here. Let's just finish it off by adding a little vignette. So we scroll up into the essential tools, vignette tool. Now we click on choose subject and uh, we point the choose subject somewhere around the fruit. And now we can just bring the slider down to close the image a little bit further. And now as we apply two different tools, uh, it wouldn't really help that we would click on this little eye here because that would only remove the vignette. So to see completely before and after, you just need to jump into the little eye here and see before and after. I, th I think the result is really trendy, really good, and I'm really happy with it. And to finish it off, I want to show you how you can use the matte tool in a combination with the film grain tool and create a really nice vintage look. So for that, we're going to use the fourth image. We're going back to our edit module, matte tool, and we're going to start by the amount again and push it nice and high with the fade quite high. 
With the contrast, what do we like more? Uh, I think less contrast on this image. And then with the vividness, we're going to bring it all the way down. We want to make it black and white. But that's not it. We don't want a black and white. We want to have it almost like a sepia. So for that, we're going to go into our range, push it so we can see the result. And then we're going to look for the sepia look. So maybe somewhere around here. Now with the, we can play around with the saturation to see what we like more. But I think somewhere around here looks quite realistic. So that would be your before and after of applying the matte look. We can push the fade a little bit more if we want to. And then we can close this tool and move into the film grain tool. Now, if you haven't used this tool before, there is a tutorial. We have it on our channel and it should be in a corner of your screen now. So here it's really simple. You have a three sliders and we're just going to use the amount, push it quite high. And this is the uh, after and what we want, we want to bring the size of the grain down and the roughness as well to make it a little bit more gentle. So once again, we're going to use this little eye to see before and after. And I think the result is also really cool. So let's go back to our matte tool. And once again, talk about what it does. The matte tool give your photos an H look with the flat colors and high contrast. From the sliders, with the amount you adding or removing the effect, with the fade you control the loss of details that happens in the darker areas of an image, with the contrast you adjust the relationship between the brighter and darker area of your image, with the vividness you control the overall saturation of the image and of the matte effect and then we have the whole color toning section we have the range slider that affects the portion of an image in which the color is shifted now then we have the hue with the hue slider you actually select the color you want to push in the image and finally the saturation this slider of the saturation can be used to affect the saturation of the matte effect so now it's time to get your own luminar neo shortcut cheat sheet all you have to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.